Dear Lord Jesus, more than ever, Lord, we want to, to learn from you, and we want, Lord, to rejoice and relax during the apocalypse, knowing the good things that you have for us. Lord, we want to understand this, who is the enemy. We want to know how we can be aware, how we can go and be okay with you, Jesus. Please, Lord, send your Holy Spirit. Be present that we can understand your word and also that we can learn from you, Lord Jesus. Delete the man and be you the teacher today. In your name we pray. Amen. Okay. Um, the theme, if it is in the Bible, good. If disagrees with the Bible, it is not for me. Okay, the book of Revelation presents us with one of two choices, right? We just learned that. If you go with, with God, with Christ, the Creator, or against. There's, not, there's two choices. That's what the book of Revelation presents. And is invited us to know in a head so we can decide by Christ and we can be okay during the apocalypse. That's the entire purpose. To rescue, to save us. Okay? Not to scare us. It's to prevent us. That's the reason Jesus inspired this so we're not deceived and suffering all of this. Now, to understand what we're going to go uh, into, uh, we need to understand a little bit also of the central message, chapter 12. In chapter 12, we have a woman. And those who already did uh, seminar and revelations in November, and also that did some studies on this, okay, who can tell me with this woman in Revelation 12 that we're going to attach next Saturday is? That woman is what? What represents that woman? <laughs> No, that woman, the white one in chapter 12, represents the church, the true church, because white robes, the stars with the angels of God and all of that. So in Bible prophecy, a woman represents a church, the people of God, not, not a building, the people of God, okay? With certain characteristics that we're going to talk next Saturday. So when you see a woman in Revelation 12, God is telling you who is the people of God and how those from history were going back to the Bible. Because remember history, right? Let me do a short Revelation 12 uh, introductory thing here because I think it's needed. In Revelation 12, tell us about this woman that was escaping from the dragon. Because what the woman, the church of God did was going back to the scriptures. Remember that during the dark ages, Christians, we, we, we mess up. We put together all doctrines of men in our church in the fifth century, and then we start going far from the word of God. And then when the, when the war, the people of God start going back, it's Revelation 12 people that going back to the Bible. Going back and read and understand what the Bible says. So the true church is that one that goes to the word of God. And read it from here, what needs to happen and needs to know and needs to be living. Okay? Good. If you have questions, please ask the questions. And downstairs, I will go a little bit, bit more in deep on that, OK? But we're going to have time next Saturday on that. So if we understand this from the central message of the book of Revelation, again, chapter 12, that a woman is a church, and woman with white robe represent the true church that the dragon persecuted and tried to do, but no worry, because Jesus is protecting us. Then we have in Revelation 17 that other woman. The woman with the scarlet and purple clothes on a beast. <laughs> Sit down on a beast with seven heads. That's a scary. <laughs> okay, so you have another, another church that now the color suggests is not a true church. It's an apostasy system. It's an apostasy non-true system that is go against and is the opposite side. You see, in the book of Revelation, it's all about this. There is this side, please, my people, don't go there. Stay here. That's all in the book of Revelation. Be aware and enjoy heaven from now. That's a topic for less than later. That's, that's exactly the point that is now making in this Revelation 17. There's this system you need to avoid. So let me show you. So you will avoid. So you don't become again deceived and repeat this story again. So uh, in the New Testament church, the New Testament church is radiant with the Son of Righteousness, Jesus Christ, right? We have in the beginning this beautiful story. And we have the seven churches story, right? That the first churches love Christ and they have a true love and 
pure and then by the by the third century the Christian church became the official and then everyone started messing up and started making all of that but that's the beginning so we have this beautiful purified church in the book of Revelation oh, sorry the New Testament church is radiant with the son of righteousness Jesus Christ right they start from Jesus Christ and go on so this woman was that church that came back persecuted by the dragon through the dark ages and then let's go back to the bible many reformers from there luther was one of the biggest and first ones we're going to celebrate 500 anniversary of of matthew luther 95 thesis this october october 31st we're going to have a big event here uh with nice videos with history so you are invited uh to that it's called pale horse it's going to be beautiful we have preparing wonderful things for you so write down in your calendar the last weekend in october so um, we have this woman and now we have this chapter 17 so let's move on and said then one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and talked with me saying to me now look at this you need to understand that the seven plagues happened just before Jesus second coming but in that vision chapter 15 remember John saw those angels and now in chapter 17, this angel, that the seven plagues didn't happen yet, okay? One of these angels came and talked to him. So what he's gonna talk about now is something that is actually happening right now, but before the seven plagues, okay? So, one of the seven angels who had the seven bowls came and taking with me saying, so the angels have the bowls, right? The bowls are there. You have, you have now the timeline clear, right? The bowls are not a spore yet. You, you see this, right? Okay, this is very important because remember the chiasmic structure is go to the center. So that's why chapter 16 is more close. It's after this. You get it? Good, good. I see heads moving this way. If you don't have, if you have questions, please write down. So, Cam, See this angel? Come, I will show you the judgment. Sorry, come, I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters with whom the kings of the earth committed fornication. And the inhabitants of the earth were made drunk with the wine of her fornication. Wow. So the picture is not happy. You know, the picture is like this. This, uh, this church is a church that is on a beast. We know what a beast represents, right? Bible prophecy, a beast represents a political power. Right? A kingdom. We have all the beasts in Daniel. We have the beasts in, in Revelation 2 that represents those beasts a kingdom. So this beast also is connected. Now, what you see here is a political power that have a church sit down on that. Look at the picture. It's so clear. So far all the beasts were separate. But now you have a church sit down on a political power. Ooh. We know by history that happened before. We know. We know that happened in history. We merged that and was not good. So the book of Revelation is telling that those angels with the balls ready, so just towards the end, one of them came and said, hey, hey, before I go with the balls, let me tell you this. You need to know this. There is a church, this apostolic church, that is connected with a political power. Okay, you get the picture, right? This is very, very clear when you understand Bible prophecy in this way. Let's move on. Then he said to me, the waters, I love this, you know, Bible prophecy is so simple, you just need to keep reading. <laughs> the explanation is there in the Bible. <laughs> the, the, not that way. But yeah, we can go, we can still do that. You know, it was so neat to put this uh, together that uh, there is an um, Alexandre Hisrob historian that, that culminated this, this concept in his two Babylons, uh, Papa, uh, Papa, um, uh, um, booklet, book, booklet. They consulate the pagans to the nominal Christianity in Rome pursuing its usual policy, took the measures to get the Christians and pagan festivals Put it together. I tried to say that word, but now it's not going to work right. Thank you. And to get paganism and Christianity now far sunk in idolatry. And this, as in so many other things, to shake hands. So what happened was that Christianity, Christianity and paganism shook hands. And guys, please don't blame, don't blame anyone. Don't say oh, who is the enemy. We were the enemy that day. So be careful you're not going to be that again. 
Because that's the awareness in the book of Revelation. There's going to be a false worship system that's going to teach you wrong. And then you're going to go and do the same thing that happened years, centuries ago. Please don't point over there who is the enemy. Because maybe you are going to become part of the same mistake again. And that's the point where this is for hope. Not to point in and became better. No, it's to be close to Jesus. So be careful you don't become the seed in this way. Because years ago that happened. And maybe things are going to change. Uh, in the baptismal manual uh, in 1893, but Edward Hitchcock, the Ministry of Convention, said, "What well, is a pity that is uh, that it Sandy camps Brandon with the mark of paganism and Christian with the name of the Son of God, then adopted and sanctioned by the papal apostasy and." And what? Thank you. As a secret legacy to Protestantism. This is a Baptist preacher. That he saw this reality in history. He studied prophecy and said, how is it possible that we are doing again the same thing? How is it possible that we are doing and, and again by the same lie? The same merch, the same church and state mistake we are doing nowadays. What he did, he started, he started reading the Word of God. And he noticed that in the last day, this is going to happen. Ezekiel 20, 12 says, Moreover, I also gave them what? My Sabbaths to be a sign between them and me, that they might know that I am the Lord who sanctifies them. Look, all of these people, all these reformers were looking little by little for more light because it was so much dark on the Word of God that all of them, all of them were revealing a little bit more, a little bit more, a little bit more. Well, that means that they are not saved because they didn't worship in the right day. No, no, no. Salvation is by faith in Jesus Christ. Amen? We're talking about here a big deception. It is a big mistake. It's a false worship that is in our society that we need to be aware in the Word of God. It's not about salvation. It's about relationship with Jesus. It's about growing in Him. It's about being close to Him. Because relax. It's just the apocalypse. And that's what we need to know. There's going to be big intentions. But there's going to be people sending to read it. And to discover. And we need to keep studying and keep telling this to the people. Ezekiel 22 also has a beautiful text. Her priests have violated my law and profaned my holy things. They have not distinguished between the holy and unholy. Nor have they made known the difference between unclean and clean. And they have hidden their eyes from my Sabbath so that I'm profane among them. So what he's telling is that we need to go back to the Bible. We need to go back to the scriptures. We don't need to profane what God says from the very beginning. So we need to make this point understanding and show the beauty. Look, my dear, God before the... Get this. Now you need to make the picture closing and, and, and understanding. The angel with the bowl of the plagues is right there. And said, hey, John, before we start, my six friends and I start with this. Come on, buddy. Tell everybody. Tell everybody it's a big lie. They need to get out of that confusion. Because look, look, this is for the people that worship wrong. Like we don't want G Jesus, our boss, doesn't want everybody, anybody there suffering that. So please be aware that it's a false thing. You see the beautiful of the book of Revelation awareness? It's not about, oh, who is bad. No, don't be you the enemy. Don't be against God. Don't be against Jesus. Worship him right. Wow. Let's go back to the Bible. Let's go for with the Bible. If it is in the Bible, I believe it. If it disagrees with the Bible, it's not for me. Daniel 7 says that in that time, that beast will think to change the times and the laws. Was prophesied from the book of Daniel that this is going to happen. Judge Eliot says, What is the 
purpose? What's, what's the purpose? To make a erase in heaven born code? Is the eternal table, the tablet of the law to be defeated by the creature hand? It's not, it's not something, it's, it's a very interesting question. God write with his finger something and we need to forget about it because it's... Ah. My dear, the Word of God is full of beautiful, beautiful promises. And the book of Revelation is not different. Jesus is awareness us what is going on. Jesus is telling us, look, I have the control. I have my angels here before the plagues. You need to know this. There's two women. There is a woman that is white that is following me. And there is one that is making false teachings, teachings of men. Don't go in that way because you need to know I am your creator. I am your Jesus. Be my body and make me your head following me look at the call that jesus is doing in revelation 18 2 and he cried mightily with a loud voice saying babylon the great is fallen he's fallen look my dears that that false that false doctrine that's false apostasy is not anymore there's gonna be a point that anybody's gonna know we need to tell the people that's not the truth in the bible is the word of god that rules is the word of god that makes us happy and relieve us from stress and make us be okay during the plagues. We need to go back to that. That great Babylon is falling. It's falling. There is, there is no arguments. When you go to the Bible, more and more people all around the world are studying the Word of God. And they're so clear. I want you to today to understand this and live this. To teach others. Because let's keep reading. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, come out of Babylon. Come out of here, my people. Come out of the confusion. Don't be in a place that you... There is people all around the world. There is Catholics. There is Pentecostals. There is... Uh, there there is Baptists, Lutherans, that they're standing the word of God and they're coming out of the confusion all around the world in a great scale, in a beautiful scale. Let you share in her sins and let you receive of her plagues. Now you see the picture? Now you see the picture in Revelation 17 and 18 just before the plagues. Jesus said, where are you? Hey, 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 hey. This is the last big awareness before the plagues because we just learned that during the plagues, nobody is going to turn to God. So it's before the plagues. It's right now that we need to start thinking who we are worshiping and how. Because it's clear, please, please, please understand this false worship and follow Jesus. Follow the Lamb wherever He goes because He's worthy and He wants to sanctify you by your worth. Please, these balls are not for you. What a beautiful promise. Relax. It's just the apocalypse. Oh, my dears. There is people of God all around, in all denominations. And God is calling everyone, everyone, every one of those to go back to the Word of God. To go back where the true Word of God says and fulfill it and follow Him. Uh, in this Bible commentary, in every apostate of world conforming church, there is some of God's invisible and true church who, if they would be safe, must come out. That's the call in Revelation 18. Come out of the confusion. Come out of that false worship and do it right. Don't follow the enemy because Jesus has everything win. Oh my dear. Jesus is inviting you and me today to confirm a decision. And I want you to make this in your heart today. I want to pray with you. I want to pray where you are. And if you want to follow Jesus, the Lamb, whatever it takes, I want you to make that decision in your heart today. Because there is a big revelation. And now this is real, my dear. Bible prophecy is talking our days. So we're living Bible prophecy today. Which one is your choice? Let's pray. Dear Jesus, we want to follow you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for the book of Revelation and tell us this beautiful message and truth. Oh, Lord Jesus, thank you, Lord. We want to we wanna be okay and safe during the plagues and living with you, Lord Jesus, from now. And dear Lord, thank you for telling us about these false doctrines and teachings. 
Now we understand, Lord, that you are prevailing us. You are just telling us before it happens so we can, we can make a choice today for you, Jesus, to follow you and your word. Because we know, Lord, you have a beautiful plan for us, and we want to start living it today, Lord. Oh, Lord Jesus, in this moment, I give my life to you, and I make a commitment to follow you. And there is people in this room now, Lord, that maybe for many years going to church, and for many years is, is now finally making and seeing your will, Lord, your will and following you. And make this relationship real with you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for this truth today. Thank you for this beautiful book of the Revelation. And dear Jesus, we want to start our relationship with you right now. Please, keep showing us how we need to follow you more. In your name, Jesus, we pray. Amen.